Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review. Damn it. This is a Moonman TI-500 Titanium. It is a titanium piston filler that Moonman released before they changed their name to Caveco. Sorry, Magon. I love this pen and I hate this pen. I put it on my list of worst pen experiences of 2023. But I have it inked all the time now because I love how it writes and feels. I hate it because it's almost impossible to disassemble and the nib was horrible. I replaced it with a Parker Vector steel nib and it's wonderful now. I also hate it because Moonman stopped making it, or at least making improvements to it. It just disappeared. It could be that Lamy took exception to it being so close to the steel version of the Lamy 2000, I don't know. But the Moonman TI-500 Titanium is now a rare pen. I recently saw a listing on AliExpress for a pen that looked just like the Moonman TI-500 called a Kuake 2000. And I thought to myself, wow, so Lamy forced Moonman Majon to change their name yet again to Kuake. I wouldn't be surprised. The Moonman Majon Kuake 2000. I even came up with an acronym for it, the MMK 2000. So I ordered one to see whether it's even close to the Moonman TI-500 because inquiring minds want to know. So let's take a look right now. And here's another package from China. I'm not sure what this is. I think I've got an idea what it might be, but we shall see. What did I order at the same time? Aha, uh -huh. yes, I remember now. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, gee, I'm not even going to be able to remember the name. This is a Kuake, and that's K-U-A-K-E 2000. And I got it because I wanted to compare it to my Moonman TI-500. They look very, very similar. Only I think this one is a brushed aluminum. Be interested to see if they take the same nib. Of course, I put a Parker Vector nib in that one, but it is a piston filler, and you might actually be able to get that piston apart. It's supposed to screw in. I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> what in the hell is that? <laughs> hey, you kid, get away from there. I would not mess with that thing. Don't put your lips on it. There seems to be a screw thread in there, or at least a silicone cap, but no snap. It just sort of sticks in there. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, nowhere close to the quality of the Moon Man, but this is a Chinese copy of the discontinued Moon Man TI-500. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. And the first thing you want to know is, is this a Moon Man Mad John fountain pen under a different name? I think I knew the answer to that question within five seconds of holding this pen. And that answer is a resounding no. And the next question is, is it worth the $33 US? N this is an awful Chinese imitation of a Chinese imitation of a German fountain pen. At least the Moon Man was well made. This feels more like my grade 7 metal shop lathe project with Mr. Beamer. This is shop class. My name is Mr. Adler. You will be learning how to make things. Now does anybody know why you are in shop class? Because we had to choose between this and home ec and we didn't want to be sissies? Wrong! Most of you, however, will be pumping gas or cutting sheet metal. And that's why we have shop class. But I get ahead of myself. Overall, this pen is roughly the same size and shape as the Moonman TI-500 Titanium, and hence the Steel Lamy 2000 as well. But it feels like a rough metal slug from the foundry to me. I'm guessing this material is aluminum. I haven't even used it yet, and it's all scarred up. From the top, we see the flat finial and the seam where the top piece is screwed into the cap to secure the clip. This clip is one of the worst pieces of poo -poo. that I've seen in a long time. 
well, at least since the Craco Edge, the Lamy 2000 copy. It's a solid piece of aluminum that is fixed into the cap with no spring at all. What's going through your tiny little engineer's brain to design something like this? This piece right here just screams, I don't give a crap, on behalf of the Kuaki Pen Company. I have now officially dubbed the Kuaki Pen Company the Kurapi Pen Company because that's what this is, Kurap, with a capital K. This is either total ignorance and incompetence, or it is willful larceny. 33 bucks? This isn't even worth a buck right here. Let me explain. I'm no engineer, but even I know this can't function as a clip. Aluminum this thick is not flexible, so the clip must pivot back right here into the cap. This isn't rocket science, guys. You tell people I'm a rocket scientist? I'm a theoretical physicist. What's the difference? What's the difference? <laughs> well, why don't you just tell them that I'm a toll taker at the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> rocket scientist, how humiliating. <laughs> Look, Moon Man got it right. Here is their clip and you see how it rocks back into the cap slightly. Not as well as a Lamy, but good enough to make it a usable clip. And look here, even Jin Hao gets it. Here's their Lamy-like clip. You can see how it pivots back on a spring into the cap. And this is a $3 pen right here, guys. So it can't be ignorant. It is, I don't give a carape. And of course, you won't know it's crap from the pictures on AliExpress because it looks like it might work. Once it's in your hand, however, you'll know immediately you've been ripped off for 33 bucks. And even if the clip did pivot, the edges are really razor sharp. This pen should have a warning label stuck on it saying, caution, this crap will cut you, all with K's. And look, we're only on the crap, I mean the cap. It gets worse from here. This less than high precision turned aluminum curves down to the barrel. And look at this beautifully precise brushing slash grinding we have on the cap. It's so uneven, it actually fluctuates in thickness. It looks like someone did this with a skate grinder. <laughs> There's a large step down to the barrel, which tapers up and then back down to the piston knob and the flat end finial. Is there a brass dot on the end, like on the Moon Man or on the Lamy? No. It's a piece of plastic, and I'm guessing it's Delrin plastic, which we will see again shortly. And does the cap unscrew or snap off? Well, I'm still unsure about that. The cap is shoved onto the section and basically sticks inside the soft plastic cap liner, which I'm guessing is Delrin. So it isn't a screw cap, and it isn't a snap cap. There's nothing but friction of the aluminum section inside the Delrin plastic to hold that cap in place. First-rate design there, Carape. You should be proud of your slapdash efforts. To keep that cap on, you have to give it a slight twist inside that plastic. With the cap off, we see the long tapering aluminum section and Parker Vector style semi-hooded nib. The nib has a small M on it right there, but it's followed by an O. And if you actually pull that nib out of there, it goes M-O-O-N-M-A-N. -O -O what do you know? It's a Moon Man nib. I thought it was an M that stood for medium. Uh, but it actually should stand for moron, as in, you're a moron for buying this piece of carape. I mean, I'm a person too. You're a moron. And we also see the little ears that you find on a Lamy 2000 as part of the capping mechanism for that pen. There's one there and one on the other side. Only here, they're just for show, as they don't do anything. What's more, if there was a matching mechanism inside the cap to accept the little ears, these don't extend beyond the surface of the pen in any case, so they are just useless, you know, as designed. Now let's take a tour of the piston mechanism. By this time, I'm thinking, if you can't make a clip or a cap, how are you going to do a piston? And of course, the answer is badly. The piston unscrews with the Asvine piston wrench, as that fits in there perfectly. 
And when I unscrewed, I'm not going to do it now, but when I unscrewed the piston to examine it and compare it to the Moonman TI-500, it told me all I needed to know about the piston. It's a piece of carapé, you guessed it. I pulled it out and the piston itself popped right off the rod inside the pen and it took me 30 minutes and some special tools called pliers to get it out. Now I crazy glued the piston back on that rod and put it back inside the pen so that I can at least attempt to fill this pen with ink. And the section, unlike the Moon Man, does unscrew but I'm not going to do it because number one, there's no way to get that nib and feed out from the back anyway. And it takes a good amount of time and patience to get the section back on and lined up with those little useless dog ears. The cap posts, but not deeply or securely, unless you twist it into that Delrin plastic. And then it back weights the pen significantly. Unposted, the pen is okay in the hand. I bought this pen on AliExpress for $33 US, or $32 overpriced. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Karake 2000 aluminum piston filler with the Moonman TI500 titanium piston filler, a Jinhao 80, a Krako Edge, and a Moonman TI200. I thought that the Krako Edge had the worst clip ever made for a fountain pen until I saw this Carape 2000. And please don't correct me, I know that the company's name is Keiko, not Krako, but Krako is much more appropriate if you ask me. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Moonman TI500 has a Parker Vector nib in it that I replaced the original awful Moonman Extra Fine nib with. My Jinhao 80 has a black Lamy Architect style nib on it. The Keiko isn't worth mentioning. And the Moonman TI 200 titanium I anodized to get those colors. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 JSM paper. And this is the Kuake 2000. And it has an extra fine steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's a decently wet for an extra fine nib. And it's certainly better than the original extra fine Moonman nib that came in my Moonman TI-500. It's actually fairly smooth with some good feedback. And the ink I put in this pen is Leonardo Black. Again, the nib is worth 10 times the value of the pen. Uh, so that nib's probably worth about a buck. That's the line variation. Not much to be had, very stiff. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, very scratchy and dry, actually runs out. And some quick writing. Yeah, no issues with that feed. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, uh, this lengthy pause was brought to you by the Scream Therapy Anger Management Group. We scream so you don't have to. My mother used to say, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Well, my mom didn't have a YouTube channel, and I do. So send the little ones out of the room right now because it's going to get blue. Are they gone? Good. What the actual frig? Are you kidding me? I don't know where to start with this because everything is wrong with this PLO. That's a pen-like object. 
more like a POS PLO, if you ask me. So let's start with the price. I said it wasn't worth a buck, but I suppose if you melted down the aluminum, let's see. Um, today's price for aluminum by the gram times 38, which is uh, point zero zero two 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 U.S. cents per gram times 38. That makes the pen worth $0.87 cents U.S. Now I'm going to talk directly to the Kuake Pen Company here. So excuse me for a moment. Gentlemen and ladies of the Kuake Pen Company, please stop. You're making it worse for all other manufacturers of Chinese fountain pens. It's an uphill battle to be accepted as a serious pen maker just being from China. Even though some Chinese pen makers are making wonderful fountain pens that are affordable, incredibly well made, it's people like you that make it much harder for them to be accepted by fountain pen lovers around the world. Now I keep saying some Chinese pens are as good if not better than their Western counterparts and then you folks come along with this piece of lazy, slipshod garbage. Do something else guys because you're just not good at this. Start a TikTok or something. Something more useful than this piece of carape. And to you AliExpress retailers that are selling this crap, please join me over here at camera 3. Please stop. You have a lot of good products in your store at reasonable prices. If you continue to rip off your customers by selling them overpriced trash like this, well, let me speak only for myself. I will no longer shop with you. So please take items like this down. I will be writing reviews on them on your storefront. So beware. Okay, back with you inquiring minds. Sorry for the rant. What I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen. I don't like anything about this fountain pen. From the price to the childish design and manufacturing. There's nothing to like here. Nothing. But there is a silver or aluminum lining. My mom used to say I should look for the good in everything. Good. Nathaniel Good. <laughs> of wood. Unfortunately, good is no good. <laughs> he keeps it on too much. Look at that smiling. That's terrible. It's got... So even though I initially felt ripped off for $33 US, I tried to think positively and I figured I'd have a great failure of a fountain pen to put on my worst pens of 2024 list next December. Something to look forward to. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as instant access to my videos once I post them. And that just leaves it for me to say... <coughs> Thank you for watching and that's all she crap that's all she wrote I made this